And away we go. It is the nightcap right here on BearcatJournal.com. I'm Chad Brendel. He's Aaron Smith. And uh, as always, visit www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Download the app for Android, iPhone, everything galactic. Aaron, you had you had a recommendation. I'm gonna I'm gonna I don't know if it's gonna be tomorrow or Wednesday, but uh, I was at the store yesterday. We got a new grill. Finally, I'm back in the grill business after five months of uh, not not having yeah, not <laughs> having that option. Uh, I got some jalapeno cheese mets, and that's and the way to go, man. The galactic sauce on the on the cheese mets is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, first off, jalapeno cheese. There's you can't go wrong. Right, but jalapeno cheese mats are bomb. They're yes, phenomenal. Uh, what what kind did you get? Did you get the just the Johnsonville the blue, or did the bluegrass you... meats? Well done. Those are way better, way yeah. more kick. And yeah, the Johnsonville yeah. ones are just eh, they're okay, but they're that's, that's all they have out here. Like I I didn't have an option out here. I was I'm I'm like it's so strange because I'm still yeah. adjusting to Athens and I'm like, oh, the, why, why aren't there, why aren't there any? <laughs> Why don't I have the real food? Why aren't the bluegrass here? <laughs> <laughs> but, so yeah, that's that's on my on the menu here, either tomorrow or uh, or Wednesday. I got to talk to Shane too, because my sauce here, I mean, I've had it since a couple months now. I mean, I guess probably since. Right. Yeah, but we, we got the fresh sauce, so it doesn't have the preservatives, so we need to... Right, and so I don't know how long this lasts, and now it's it's super runny, so I, I got to I gotta find out what the shelf life is, even in the Shane, refrigerator. Yeah, Shane, hit us up. Let, let um, me know, Shane. Hit me hit me on Twitter. <laughs> Just tag me and, and let me know what, what you would recommend. So we, we, we finally have some news, Aaron. Well, I mean, the, the Garth Brooks stuff was news, right? Like... It was fantastic. It was newsy. It was fun. It was funny. We had right. the past two well, days. We have a, when was the last time we had a story like that, right? Where right. we're in, interacting with an actual celebrity. Right. I, that was, I, it was great. It was outstanding. And, and the numbers the numbers from the DJ episode are, are up because everybody just like DJ telling the story and not having any clue. Uh, but then I'll tell you, and we talked about this on the, on the bounce tonight. When you see the picture of Garth Brooks with Chris Lepore, you could have asked me, I could have had a hundred guesses of who that was. And I, I wouldn't have picked Garth Brooks, right? Like no cowboy hat, no, no jeans, no cowboy boots, no nothing. Just Garth Brooks in a, in a t-shirt and a backwards cap. Like he's one of us doing the, the, the nightcap. Like I would have never known. That was Garth Brooks. There's no. no chance. That looks like Steve from Reading. Right? <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. I, I, mean, I don't know a Steve from Reading, but I'm just saying that looks like just he's 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 a jag. It's just a guy. But but Demar Demar got got Chris back right here he in did. this tweet. He did. This is so great. Good shooting with you and your friend. So <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but we did find out from Chris, like. Demar wasn't a slouch in this game. He, he hit like 10 threes in a row because he's well Demar. done. Well done. So, yeah. Uh, so it, we'll put that one to bed. Uh, but it is time to, to get into some some news. We got some news. Micah Potter, right? Yeah. <laughs> Noah Potter. <laughs> Noah Potter. Micah's, Micah's little brother, <laughs> Noah, uh, is uh, committed to Cincinnati now. He's uh, a transfer from Ohio State. Class of 2019, he was a four-star, uh, top 10 player in the state of Ohio. Um, was on track to start seeing more time in the rotation at Ohio State and then had a foot injury that required surgery. Uh, and then during the foot injury, had a an eye situation, His detached retina. retina. Sep- right. That's crazy. He had That's to crazy. lay in bed for four days, only getting up for five minutes per hour. With his eye closed, couldn't open his eye, and he had to lay in bed. I, for I would fifty-five minutes an hour. I don't know how you keep your eye closed that long. I, I, I could. I, I couldn't. Mean, he do had it. to have had a patch on, right? So you just don't get tape it down, it. glue it down. I don't. Whatever you have to do, I couldn't <laughs> do it just that long. Super glue, up. right? <laughs> so, um, if it, he he participated in spring practice this year for Ohio State, so it would seem he is back to normal back to healthy 
had two sacks in their spring game. Um, this is one spot where I think the Bearcats were content with their line depth. Yes, I think that's a fair assessment. But if they had a chance to add somebody to that mix, like, and what I mean by that is like, we knew they were going to go out and find a transfer kicker. Yeah. We knew they were going to add an offensive lineman. They always do. Intensely. So they they added Brian Coe. They added Dartarian Tinsley. We knew they were going to add a big outside wide receiver. The they did that fits with the bill. Right. right. We knew they would like to add had, a running back if it was had, the right guy. We had question marks. Corey Kiner comes along. Mm-hmm. But at defensive line, it was like we would we would like to get better getting after the quarterback after my Jay leaves. But we like what we have. Like, especially you have Malik Van, you have Jawan Briggs, you have Jabari Taylor. You're really confident in your starting group. As long as everyone stays healthy, absolutely. Well, uh, yes, that goes without saying. Sure. And then second unit, I think Eric Phillips had a really good spring. He did. We have talked extensively about Dominique Perry and and my affinity for uh, what I've seen from him in that rotation. Um, but really like, and then, you know, Rob Jackson has flashed Mm -hmm. some and, and, um, Jamal Williams, Jamal Williams has flashed a little bit, but I'm, uh, but I love Cleveland, Cleveland Heights, Watley, Justin Watley. Oh, sure. Has also flashed some. So there were guys, but there's a lot of inexperience and and a lot of unknown. So I think you want to, you want to have as many bullets in the gun as possible, right? And now with Noah Potter, that situation came along. And obviously you have good relationships with all the people at Ohio State. Kerry Combs is going to know the kid from being the defensive coordinator and being on the staff there for a long time. So I think it's a good idea to take this swing of let's let's take our chance, see if we can get better, see if we can find a dude. That coming out of high school, like if you look at Steve Wilfong's breakdown, Steve Wilfong had him projected as a second day pick in the NFL draft coming out of high school. So, well, that wasn't out of high school. That was, he actually wrote that in 2021. So that was written um, and evaluated January 22nd of 2021. Um, I think it was still an evaluation of like who he could be. Right. Like, sure. Because he um, hadn't but, really played at Ohio. State it was. It was. It was still. It, it does say, and I'll, I'll share it right here. Um, it does say projection. Um, but I did want to correct that just in the the timeline of sorts. Um, but he has him listed as twitchy when the ball snapped, terrific hands, outstanding hips, has a bevy of pass rushing moves, also torques his way between offensive linemen as a run stuffer, aggressive football player, physical finisher as a tackler, projects a multi year starter and NFL draft pick. And th- again, that was you know, just a year and a half ago, just after last season. Uh, right. Um, two seasons ago, rather. Um, but hasn't projected as second or third round, day two. So right around the same time frame or, or same pick range as a, a man who preceded him here at the same position at University of Cincinnati in MyJ Sanders. Yeah. And, and given the success they've had with transfers and especially – Another thing we talked about on the on the bounce, this isn't you're not going to have to rush him into 70 snaps, right? You're going to be able to let him develop, let him grow into the system, let him become an ingrained member of this culture and then let him try to shine. And you brought up the you brought up the point in the BCJ or in the BBP tonight uh, before I could get to it. But it was the fact that we've seen this done with Juwan Briggs, exactly the same with Juwan Briggs. Right. Like people expected Juwan to come in here and kind of take over at his position because he was so highly touted. He was of the same recruiting class as uh, um, Noah here, Noah yeah. Potter here. But Noah was the number nine uh, player out of Ohio, whereas Juwan Briggs was number two. Right. But we did see to want to come in and, and earn his time. But we've also seen it with Darian Beavers. We've seen it with Brian Cook. 
we've seen it with so many of these guys that have transferred in here. If they're given some runway and some time to acclimate and not having the weight of the world thrown on them immediately, the trajectory has been through the roof. Well, hell, even as recently as Nick Mardner, he's not with the ones. Right. Like he, he's spending some time with the ones, but he's also running largely with the twos. Right. It's not just plug and play. You're the guy. Have right. fun. So I, I, I think there's definitely a history of wh- how they how they deal with these players and, and how they bring them in. And it's not just you're our guy. Go do your thing. No, come compete. Come right. Come, come. Uh, I don't even know. You almost have to earn your seat. You almost have to. I think this goes back to when Luke first got here, right? You have to earn your seat. You have to earn the right to wear Cincinnati across your chest. So come in here. We're going to slot you. You're not going to be the starter, but you have to earn that right. And I, I think that they. You could be the starter. If sure. You win the job. Absolutely. But they're not just giving you anything. Even right. even with Evan Prater right now and the guy that they brought in, Ben Bryant, no one knows who the starter is going to be come Arkansas. Right. It's not Evan Prater. You've been here. You're the guy. It's not Ben Bryant. We brought you in here. You're the guy. It's let's figure this out. Earn your yep. paw. Earn the the to the right to wear Cincinnati across your chest. So yeah, I mean, I, I think this is a uh, a a very plus addition for this ahead. defensive line. Um, I, I, I'm excited to see exactly how he looks when we get a chance to to see him uh, at higher ground. I, I'm wondering if uh, maybe we'll see him kind of work in camps. Well, you got the official the number. You got the official numbers on him, 6'5 and 275, right? 6'4 and a half, 277. So just under a tick under 6'5 and 277 pounds. That's a That's, big boy. It's a big boy. It's a big boy. One other thing, uh, Corey Kiner on campus enrolled Bearcat. Officially. Officially. So I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to see – just how much it's going to mean to him to be wearing Cincinnati coming back home and yeah, doing what all of us hoped he would have done the first go round at this. Right. Right. Uh, it, it's things are, things are starting to starting to we're stuck. Like we, we had a couple weeks here in the beginning of May, like after the Ravon commitment that kind of, gave us a chance to like catch our breath because it feels yeah. like for 18 months we haven't had a chance to catch our breath yeah right you've been doing this for what almost over a year now right uh, two years we're we're yeah we're this will be year two the end of like when when the season starts up we'll be at year two yeah so you're at a year and a half it hasn't slowed down yeah. a little over a year and a half it hasn't slowed down since you started here no there hasn't been more than like a day like that for a long time. It was like, if we had a day where it's nothing happened, it was like, <sighs> right. Mm-hmm. There's finally been like a, uh, a brief 10 day window where the, the big news has been Garth Brooks playing basketball. <laughs> <on the practice. laughs> yes. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think my favorite part about like what's happening right now with the football team is the fact that, the questions that we had at the beginning of this off season are no longer the questions that we have. We just have evolved questions now, right? right. Like right. they're, they're totally different questions than we had. Well, we were going to do before the, the Garth, before the Garth stuff hit, we were going to do defensive line on Saturday. Yeah. Now when we do defensive line, that's going to be an entirely different conversation. conversation. Absolutely. And we're probably going to need to push it back because we just did this tonight where we discussed yeah. a lot of that. So yeah. we'll have to f- check a different box on the on the defense. So yeah. we go to the other option that you had. So stay tuned and find out what that other option is. <laughs> All right, man. That's uh we went really long last night, so we'll we'll shorten it up for you a little bit tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. It's the nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken, right here on BearcatJournal.com. See ya!